Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Planescape Torment. This is gonna RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today here in the, what's it called? The Vault of the Ninth World. This guy is called the Vault of the Ninth World, and I'm not really sure why. He looks like a face. Yeah, he's a face with a few horns. A few too many horns there. Um, but we came up back here last episode because we, well, we came here because of a quest that we're gonna complete in a little bit. But before we do, we came back here to talk to Konal and Otis because... Uh, and also Lena. Let's go. Let's start with Lena and see what she has to say. You see a middle-aged woman, her face care-lined and compassionate. She looks like she's led a hard life. Can I help you with something, stranger? Uh, who are you? I'm Lena. I supervise these other two. And you, she waves her hand at the companions. Uh, what is it you do here? This is a storehouse. I'm the supervisor. Things get stored here, things get taken out of here. Eh, not much to tell, really. I see. My thanks. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, I, 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 need, I don't need anything. What about you, Conal? You see a thin, skulking man. His long, nimble fingers quiver slightly. And he has trouble meeting your eyes when he talks to you. You startle me! I, I haven't seen you around here before, stranger. Well, what do you want from me? Who are you? I'm Conal. I work here. Oh, and what is this place? He looks at you carefully to see if you're joking. Well, it's the Vault of the Ninth World. It's a, t a storehouse. Uh, didn't you read the sign when you came in? Well, thanks, I guess. Hmm, I see a pattern here, don't you? You see a hulking man, dull-faced and slack-jawed. His muscles, however, are truly a sight to behold. Oh, we're checking out his muscles. Mm -hmm. He regards you steadily with his dead eyes. What? Who are you? No, uh, no talk me. Talk Lena. He waves his oak-like arm at the woman supervisor. Uh, just a few questions. No talk me! He seems agitated. All right, all right, all right. That's not, I didn't... Meant um. Well, if I press S, it, tell it takes me to this screen. Okay, what I meant to do is press down. What? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I was gonna say, where is the exit to this place? Please don't tell me this. It's it's a. Uh, uh, what's the word? Ah, uh, well, it's a portal. Yeah, that's the word. And now we can talk. Oh, that was Actually, too now mean. we can't talk. Trist is to be sold into slavery because she cannot prove she paid a debt to Byron Pickett. I have agreed to try and find her loan documents in order to free her. I have those loan documents. The thing is, I don't, I can't really just go ahead and give her the documents outright. Uh, and this is where Byron Pickett just stays. Um, I can't do that because I need to give them to somebody else. That said, I don't remember who that somebody else is. Let's have a chat with Lenny and he might know. Uh, you see Lanny, he smiles as you approach. Hello, Cutter, what can I do for you? Uh, I have a question? Okay, well, he doesn't really do anything for me. So I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure I need to give it to somebody I can trust in the Armonium, I believe. So this leads us to the upper ward and the coffin maker. There's a coffin maker over here, so let's go. This strange building appears to be a coffin maker shop. The sign above the door has... Like the... The sign above the door has the slogan, Engineered for Eternity, clearly written upon it. Yep, that's uh, that's how you should make your coffins, I guess. Hamri's Dimitri. No, wait a minute. Hamri's is... Oh, I think I know it. Maybe I don't know. And Dim Tree, not Dimitri. Dim Tree. And we have some coffins over here. Let me... Uh... I'm gone. Apparently, they are very good friends. Uh, there's also an interrogation mark over there. It's tricky to find. Uh, a coffin is currently under construction at the stable. Yeah, I... Oh, I can. Oh, we got some bandages, it's always nice. This one I can see. A completed coffin, the worksmanship is not of the highest quality. Yeah, we've heard of this before. We have a silver bracelet over there. The board contains various tools used in the art of coffin making. It's not clear if this is a tombstone or a headboard. <laughs> I don't know what that has to say. Uh, or that means, I mean. Uh, these shelves hold many bottles and vials. Most are filled with, with what, with what? with unidentifiable liquids and powders. This board contains various tools used in the art of coffin making. And over there we have something else as well, a potted plant. It's in pretty good shape, but all, but could could use some water and just a bit of a trim. Just a bit of a trim then, okay. First off, let me take care of this. So I stack those right there. This is uh, to be sold later. Uh, and let's have a chat with the hammeress and see what's going on. You see a rugged looking square jawed man. He turns to you with a wide smile. How are you Cutter? Good day to you. Good day indeed. He squints at you for a second then juts his hand out to shake yours. I'm gonna shake his hand and say greetings. 
Hammer is at your service, member of the Harmonian and the fashioner of fine coffins for the recently departed. I think I know you, do I not? Uh, let me see if I can place it. And he pauses, pauses to think a moment. Sharp with names I was in the Harmonium, let me tell you. Knew everyone on the entire world. Uh, my name is Adam. He snaps his fingers. Of course, Adam. I knew I recognized you. Anyway, will you require my services? He studies you, then smiles, seeing the opportunity for a joke at your expense. It seems to me, sir, that you are on in uh, one in desperate need of a coffin, and soon. He seems pleased with his wit. Uh, can I not compliment his wit? Apparently, I can't. I have some questions. He nods at you. Ask away. He gives you a broad smile. Uh, I hear your father died. Can you tell me what happened? He frowns at you. Well, he disappeared some time ago, so I can only assume that he is dead. Where did you hear this? Uh, I don't recall. You say, you say he disappeared? Oh, yes. Many, many years ago, my father was a talented stonemason, and he did not only construct sarcophagi, but he also was quite skilled in, uh, to in tomb design. People from across Sigil, the room begins to fade around you as a memory tugs at your consciousness. Updated okay, let's, my let's try to remember. You find... What was that last noise? Hmm. You find yourself standing in this very shop, talking with an older man while a child sits in the corner and plays. On the counter between you and the shopkeeper is a set of plans. He seems to be explaining some intricacies with the construction of, of a tomb. Your vision fades as you try to examine the details of the plans. When, you, when your sight returns, you are standing in a cavern in front of a tomb. Above the entry, you see the slogan, Engineered for Eternity. Did we see this already? I don't think we did. Clearly carved into stone. The shopkeeper is standing next to you, a broad smile on his, on his face. He gestures to you and begins to walk into the tomb. You quickly match his pace and begin and from behind and draw your blade. You find yourself back in Hamry's shop. He's looking at you with some concern. Are you well, sir? Uh, tell me what happened to your father. Well, he simply vanished one day, leaving most of his commissions unfinished. Most embarrassing, took a long while to get out of the debt caused by his disappearance, and to an extent, I'm still settling various accounts. Still, I have uh, a certain aptitude for the work, and... He sighs lightly and gets a faraway look in his eyes. He, nah, well, sorry, I was just thinking. My father's disappearance was the reason I joined the Harmonium and left it later on. At first, I had a burning desire to find out what happened to him. Later, I felt a certain obligation to continue his life's work. I never found the answers I sought. I was... It was quite a mystery as to what happened. His voice fades to silence. Did your father keep any plans? Or of, any of the plans for the tombs he built? He thinks for a moment. Yes, he did. I, after I came of age and inherited the business, I went through all of his records. They were quite extensive. Why do you ask? Uh, if I describe a tomb to you, could you tell me if it was your father's work? He frowns in thought, then shrugs. I can try. My harmonium training has blessed me with a sharp memory. I should be able to recognize my father's work if you give me enough details. He looks at you expectantly. Okay, I'm gonna describe the tomb from my memory. He thinks for some time. There is a little, there is little doubt that the tomb you describe is my father's work. The slogan he mentioned has been the family trademark for several generations. He pauses and gives you a strange look. The tomb, where, where is it located? I'm gonna describe the location. You describe the location in detail, surprising yourself with the knowledge you have of the area. Hemrys watches you with a concerned look. Odd, I don't recall anything in the family records that would even have permitted him to construct a tomb there. The dustmen are very careful about building rights and real estate, especially beneath the streets of Sigil. Then you recognize the location? He nods enthusiastically. Oh yes, sounds like the Drowned Nation catacombs to me. He pauses. I've never been there myself, but I've heard the area described many a time in my, in my years of, in the Harmonium. I need to know if your father kept the plans for that tomb. Yes, the warehouse where I store my goods handles my business documents as well. Anyway, they are having internal problems of some sort. New management or some such nonsense. I haven't been able to replenish my stock of late, and I doubt I could retrieve any paperwork from them either. He frowns. The Harmonium would never let things get out, so, uh, get out of hand as to cause distress to its customers. His voice fades away as he thinks, and then he looks at you. Perhaps you would look into the matter for me? The warehouse. Yes, the warehouse is having some... Internal problems of some sort, whatever that means. I can't get any stock from them until the matter is, is cleared up. And he frowns. The Harmonium would never let things go so out of hand as to cause distress to its customers. And he fades again, again. This is not the same line, is it? It is. Oh, my bad. I... For some reason, I... Anyway, the beginning sounded a little bit different. Uh, it's weird that I can ask that again. <laughs> but sure. Um, it might be a bug as well. 
I guess I don't have a choice if I want the plans, then, I guess. But why don't you handle it? Uh, I've tried, but had little success. I've taken the matter before the Armonium, but they are unable to assist me at this time. He gives you an innocent look and holds up his hands in surrender. If you truly need the plans... He looks at you expectantly. All right, all right, I'll look into the matter. He smiles broadly. Excellent! If you deal with this issue satisfactorily, you may have your plans for free. He gets that lecture look on his face again. Uh, that, ma that may not seem like sufficient payment, but let me tell you about the difficulty involved in creating those plans. Uh, no thank you. I'll, I'll just get started on this right away. Farewell. Okay, so I didn't get told the difficulty in, uh, involved in creating those plans. It's not clear. Another one of those tombstones that look like a headboard. Whatever a headboard is. Somehow it sounds like the top of the, Dumb. like the, the edge of your bed, like, you know, head of your, I don't know if it's called that or not, anyway, it doesn't matter. These crates are beginning to show signs of age, soon they will crumble to pile and refuse. What do we have here? This appears to be a siege tower. Okay, so we got the siege tower. Unfortunately, we don't have, oh, we can go through here, it's fantastic. We don't have the portal, although this might be the entrance. Interesting, let me save the game and let's see if I can get in there. This appears to be a siege tower, the walls scarred and beaded. It seems um, um, it, it has seen many a battle in its lifetime. And this is the entrance. And that's Grozuk over there. In its lowered position, this drawbridge would give attackers access to the siege tower to the walls of a city or keep. I know how what I know what it is. We have a poor quality stiletto. I don't need that. Thank you. Uh, these crates are beginning to show age and will turn into crap. Okay. Let's zoom in so we can look at this guy with proper uh, attention. And that's Grozuk. We need to kill him. You see a reptilian creature with a snake-like body, four clawed feet, leathery, leathery wings, and he's not—he's not the same color as the other guys. Uh, and it, maybe because he leaves here, because this place is nasty. Anyway, uh, and a draconian head. The scales covering its body are a vile shade of green. Well, sure. The creature stands upright on its hind legs, balancing the, its prehensile tail. As you approach, its eyes narrow to slits, and it begins to hiss, as the other ones. Greetings. The air around the creature begins to radiate heat and its scales take on a pale sheen. It gives you a hungry look and appears ready to strike. Suddenly it releases a flurry of hisses and relaxes its stands a bit. Sko. Grossuk no talk. Dole the weight. It glares at you as its tail lashes back and forth. Uh, what kind of creature are you? Every muscle on the creature seems to tense as it releases a storm of hisses. It starts to reach for you, then stops. Hate drips from its eyes when it speaks to you. Grossuk no talk. You lucky human. You go well still lucky. You stay, Grossuk shred. I'm gonna taunt him. Grossuk no talk? Grossuk sure says a lot for someone who doesn't talk. The creature cocks its head to one side and stares at you, eyes wide with surprise. After a moment, its eyes narrow to slits of hatred and its body begins to shake as its muscles tense to chords of steel. You hear a cracking sound and glancing down, notice its claws have sunk into the stone beneath its feet. The air around the creature is heavy with heat and almost seems to glow. Go. Now. And I'm gonna attack. And hopefully I won't die. We should be okay here. Okay. Right. No? Oh, that's bad. Oh, he's after me? Because if he is, he's gonna die. Just keep at it, and down he goes. In knowing the teachings of Zerthamon, I have become stronger. Oh, you have? I didn't notice that. So he gains four hit points, spell memorization, saving throws. Very nice. Let's look at his spell memorization. So no level ones, no level twos. One level three. We got Zerthimon's focus was there for. Um, helps the target remember Zerthimon's teachings the way. So it basically critical attack raised by five points. That's pretty decent. Uh, so I'm going to go with that. And uh, I'm, I'm going to see what this guy had. Just a bronze ring. Okay. Well, let's get that ring for her. Okay. Now that he's gone, I can go in here. Or maybe. All right. Maybe? No. You approach the location, the location of the portal that the boy Laszlo spoke of. You begin to replay your conversation with him in your head. Maybe the secret, yes, I know what I said, maybe the secret of, uh, to getting in is not to want to get in, you hear yourself say. Okay, I'm gonna, apparently I'm gonna be able to suppress any desire to enter the tower. Can I do that? My willpower is amazing, isn't it? Well, I don't have willpower, this is not that sort of game. Let's go. Whoa. 
Okay. Coax metal. Right. He's... What? I was not expecting this. I was really not expecting this. You see an iron creature. Its size is staggering. If it stood at full height, you, it would shatter the roof of the siege tower. Thundering echoes rattle the walkway as the creature hammers away on its forge, and a smell of soot and ash fills the air. Greetings. Updated my journal. There is the screaming of metal on metal as the giant turns to face you. You suddenly realize the golem is built into the siege tower itself. Girders, pipes, and huge bracers run through its lower torso and into the walls, and the bottom portion of its body makes up the forge itself. What are you? I am iron given purpose. What purpose? I forge the implements by which the multiverse will be unmade. You mean forging weapons? That that's your purpose? Metal is like flesh. Both carry potential in their veins. When tempered with heat and pressure, the potential surfaces. My purpose is to bring forth this potential. Allow it expression. Um, who do, who do you make these weapons for? I forge them for the sake of entropy. They are pain-seeking expression. Oh, maybe Dako knows something about this. Uh, because, you know, entropy and chaos and all this sort of stuff. What does entropy need weapons for? Beyond this tower, Arthur rallies its legions. The multiverse heals its wounds. In time, its strength may equal entropy. So the multiverse is your enemy. Why? Updated my journal. The multiverse breathes. It grows. It stagnates. It forges its chains around the planes, link by link. In time, even entropy may be chained. And you're opposed to chaining entropy? When a thing seals itself against its own destruction, it merely dies a different death. Uh, except the death you seem to offer is violent and senseless, without meaning. All things have a common ground in decay. War is necessary. Death is necessary. And so is decay, because I hate repetition. Uh, and how much of this is too much? There are no limits. Limits are one of the links in the chain of order. Limits must be shattered. Even if death is the result? All must fall upon entropy's blade. The time nears when it will be necessary to breach the walls of creation. Order will be put to the sword. Its chains will be broken. The multiverse will be undone. I think he has a flawed understanding of entropy, but but then again there is a it's a common flawed understanding of what entropy is. Um entropy What entropy means is basically that all uh, so I, th I I the 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 opposition of entropy towards chaos or towards order is ironic. That's not right. That it's it's not how it goes. It should be towards chaos. Uh, what entropy is is the the fact that all energy. Well, basically, what it what it is is if you have uh, if you have a, a bowl of water that is moving, you move you shake it around. It tends to it goes still after a little bit, and that's what entropy is. Uh, now the thing is. What he's describing is order, because the water is not ordered when it's moving around, it's chaos. That's what chaos is, the opposite of chaos being order. Uh, a, a, an easy way to, th to know whether something is chaotic or not, or rather, whether something is ordered or not, is to s ask yourself, how can you summarize this thing? Like, for example, this wall over here is very chaotic. It doesn't... You can summarize it still, but you can't, you can't compress this information into very simple things. If it were a clean wall, if it were just a single color, for example, it would be way easier. So that would be less chaotic, if you know what I mean. 
uh, over time, this wall will become a single color because, you know, that what he's talking about is the decay of all things, the decay of atoms and all that sort of stuff. Uh, just looking to uh, heat death of the universe and you know what that is all about. It's basically everything decays, even uh, even protons, I believe, are, are the last thing to decay, but everything decays, and that's what entropy is. In the end, entropy will stop and everything will be ordered. Right now, everything is chaos. Everything is like this wall, complex information that is hard to compress. So death is against entropy. Well, it's the end of entropy, but the thing is, entropy is an agent of balance, of order, not an agent of chaos. And that's a common misunderstanding of what entropy is, because I think because mostly because it's 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 uh, it's easy to argue the other the opposite to this because entropy works based off of chaos uh, I don't know I it's, it's I just don't see I mean I he might be wrong but then again uh, he might be right within the confines of the game and the writers just had a different perspective from mine uh, towards this wall entropy thing uh, but uh, this is that that's I have just described to you what entropy is and you ha can have your own opinions uh, based on what if you knew entropy or if you know entropy to be a different thing then you can have uh, different opinions that don't match up with me but if you agree with me on what entropy is and I believe I'm right in that I, I could be wrong but entropy is just the fact that everything decays and everything just goes still and goes quiet and, lo and it loses energy and energy is spent and disappears and the matter itself will disappear and dis get destroyed and forever that's just it's death heat death uh, it's not like everything it, the, it's easy to think of the heat death of the universe as um, actually you'll see that for example in Doctor Who there's an episode where they go to the end of the world um, and uh, and it's like the heat death of the universe and the stars are going out and all that but the it's uh, like that's not the end that's the start of the universe because it takes so much longer after the, all the stars go out for the universe to actually die because there will be rocks there will be a lot of stuff going around and when everything is gone there won't be matter, there won't be, because matter has energy, there won't be light at all, or any energy, or any heat, anything, that's why it's called heat death. It won't be even, it's like, it won't, there won't be anything to be frozen even, because, you know, for something to be frozen there must be matter, and something that is frozen still has energy, even though it's very low. It's just, it's kind of an un, un, uncomprehensible, but that's, that's the end. That's what happens after entropy. So sorry for that rant, but yeah. Um, I have some other questions. Okay, I'm gonna stop doing his voice. Ask, he says. What are you? I am Iron Given Purpose. So yeah, he's basically an agent of death, not entropy. Let's forget that entropy is, he's an agent of death. That, that's what he means. He calls it entropy because he doesn't know what entropy is. Uh, well, again, it, I think it, I think that's the case, but you could also think of entropy as death, uh, but not in the sense that he's putting death. I think. Anyway, uh, so what is the purpose again? Okay, I can ask that again. Uh, he forged weapons. Metal is like flesh. Oh, metal is like flesh, he says. Both carry potential in their veins. When tempered with the heat and pressure... Oh, we said that before. Um, I said this before. So, why do you do this? The iron of my body once existed only as a minor expression of pain, blades, spears, axes, arrowheads, rivets in catapults. From these implements of war was I wrought. And what happened? These minor expressions of pain were melted to forge this body, he says. Excuse me. My potential was allowed to surface. Now my purpose is to bring out the potential in, an, in other metals. Okay. So, you said that someone melted those weapons and forged your body. Who? Entropy raised me from the planar battlefields. Mm. Is he a, I think he might be an, an, an expression of a, one of the planes. Uh, the, mm. But then again, I don't know what planes would be. Would it be the lawful ones that ha that want entropy, or would it be the chaotic ones that want entropy? Because again, you see the problem of defining that. That chaos still can use entropy, especially in death, especially because you know death, chaos, and all that. Yeah, but uh, still, eventually, entropy is a, an agent of law. <laughs> as weird as that is. Uh, so what is this place? This tower is a siege engine. It exists to breach the walls between planes. How? Updated my journal. The tower anchors itself upon a plane. A wound is torn in the multiverse when the breach of the tower opens. Legions may pass from one plane to the other through the, the tower. When the plane has served Entropy's purpose, the tower anchors itself again. Uh, what happens to the legions that have used the tower? Entropy has unmade them. 
What happened? I asked. Entropy hasn't made them. And what happened to the planes the Siege Tower invaded? Entropy has unmade them. I see. Um, what are you doing? I forged the implements by which the multiverse will be made. Okay. So, uh, why do you make weapons? The iron of my body... Okay, so that's... that's that goes back. Can, I, can you tell me more of what you do with weapons? Okay, he goes back to that. And I can ask him... Okay, that's that. Have you heard of a night hag named Gravel? The night hag sought to sunder the city. Her greatest work works were those of unmaking. She walked the path of entropy. I must... I'm a, Again, just to clarify, if this wall was a simple plain, li plain line and somebody came here and smashed it, they would be working against entropy because there would be more information than a simple plain wall. There would be another one. Uh, so usually in... When you make chaos, you work against entropy, because it's just so... It's not order. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Uh, do you know what happened Updated to her? my journal. Order set chains about her. She was cast within a cage. Do you know where this cage is? Her prison is unknown to me. Okay, well, I was hoping that you would know something, but perhaps another day. Okay. Well, we met... Coke Metal. That sounds like a weird, really, really weird name for anything, right. really, but for a huge monster that makes weapons, sure. It's not really a monster. And also, we got out through a different uh, a different place. Hey, Lenny. Um, I can't really... Who did I talk to? Huh. Anyway, let's go to the Harmonium, uh, in the, to the upper ward, because that's... Oh, we have the print shop up here. Let's go over there, but that's going to be for next episode. For now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Planescape Torment. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.